Hello, this is Zeke777. Welcome back to episode 8 of my Simply Magic 2 Let's Play series. I'm going to pick up pretty much where we were yesterday, or I guess last week. Um, we're going to go ahead and finish that spell that we were working on, uh, be able to then work on the rest of the will processing. Um, so we're up here at our to-do list right now. I just want to kind of cross a couple things off list. Cobble Gen. This is actually done. So let's go ahead home button apparently doesn't work done awesome good one thing's done um the rest of this is kind of still in progress uh sand is like i said we're probably gonna use the crusher um if not i might actually just use the crusher for making gravel and then that'll give me an opportunity to use a uh, batania for making the sand itself uh wheel generation is basically done at this point i just need to uh finish collecting the rest of the crystals um so that's all fine. Um, automate mana, that's another thing to do. Yeah, we're just going to continue where we were, just finishing automation. Uh, let's go ahead and get the materials ready for that spell. Okay, I think I have everything here. Let's go ahead and toss in Blank Rune. Now Ventium, oh, I just tossed in all my Ventium and it ate it all. Okay, Arrow, <laughs> Snowball, Red Rune, Flint and Steel, Flint and Steel. Another Ventium, which I think I've got one sitting in here at least. Yeah, we'll steal one. Toss this in. Ventium and Spell Parchment. Very simple spell. Just a real quick little fire damage. Might do a decent bit of damage. I'm not actually sure how much it hits for. Let's kill a pig. Eh, I think that was, was that 8 damage? Oh, 7.9. Not bad. Um, again, I don't really want to use that though because it'll lower my uh, arcane affinity here. Kill these guys because I'm here. Okay, let's go back inside. Um, I think I made candles a while ago, but I may have run out. Um, looks like I don't have them anymore. Okay, well I need my witchwood slabs. And I think pig fat I have upstairs. Let's go ahead and make uh, four more candles. It's a slightly different ritual, but it still uses four candles. So we need four strings. One, two, three, four. And four pig fat. One, two, three, four. There we go. String, pig fat, and witchwood slab. There we go. Four candles. And my uh, chalk is downstairs repairing. It was running low after that first ritual. You don't have a whole lot of uses on it, but I mean, you can keep repairing it, so that works too. Okay, let's, should be repaired by now, yeah. Okay, do I have everything on me? I think so. Let's just go right here, obelisk. Now, like I said, it's a different ritual. Um, let's see if I can remember it. I think it's this. Sort of a, uh, almost like a heart, looks like. If this isn't it, then I guess I'll find out. There we go. Oh, missed. Go away. A kind of fun thing with this uh, wizard's chalk is it doesn't actually require a block underneath it. Um, it needs it to be placed, but if you break the block underneath it, it'll stay there. And even cooler is that it actually counts as a solid block. So I can stand on this even if it's just floating. So it's kind of cool, you can have little floating walkways just made out of floating chalk. So place our candles down. I hope I have this right. I might not. I don't know. And let's see. We need our sunstone and the monster focus. Monster focus, sunstone, step back, and firebolt. There we go. Kind of like a little black hole type thing. And like before, let's go ahead and steal it. Well, let's go downstairs here, put it in place, and maybe knock out some of our lights, just to see if it'll work. Actually, before I knock out the lights, I'm going to uh, make sure that it works and has uh, make sure that I have a way to light it, the area up. So I want this block right here. There we go, in the middle. Okay, and let's go ahead and make our outline with chalk. This one also gets some pillars, so I'll go get the materials for that, 
and make some just little I just vanilla redstone lamps. Don't need anything fancy down here. I'll never look at it except if I'm doing maintenance, which is really only if something blows up, which it, again, shouldn't. <laughs> so I'll go get the materials for that, and I'll be right back. All right, some very basic uh, redstone here. I've got my uh, lamp. Just a couple repeaters pulling out the signal from the block that's under it. And with that, I think I can break all the rest of my lights in here. And I should still be safe. I guess we'll find out shortly if I start getting attacked by zombies. And last one. Here we go. Why is this, oh, right. <laughs> why is it so light in here? <laughs> because I have lights on. That's probably why. Okay, let's go ahead. Cap these off so I don't fall down on them. And make our pillars. Just another brick with sunstone on top. Luckily, the appropriation was really useful for getting the sunstone. I've got, I think, 10 blocks of this, which is more than I will ever actually need, because I only need 5 for the spell altar, and then 4 for this. So, it's kind of a small area for the monster spawners here, but I think it should still work. Um, while I'm down here, let's grab a crystal wrench, and link you up here to you. So let's see if this works. Let's just close this off. So there should be no light down there except for this. Oh, zombie's getting killed, that's good. Maybe we'll see if I get any... Oh, let's flip you on actually. It may take him a little while to die. I'll put more spawners down there of course but come on, go ahead and die. I don't care what you die to. Okay, so it didn't fill up that, but I do have a couple crystals here. For some reason it doesn't want to update the texture when they load, when they grow. Cool, second zombie is spawning. Um, I might make a little bit more room down there just so that I have fewer failed spawns. Um, and also, I need to put more spawners down there. Uh, probably at least one of each of the different types, um, like a um, spider spawner and a skeleton spawner as well. So for now, I'm just going to let that go while I go collect the other two spawners. Um, probably another zombie or something. And I might actually clear out more room. I don't want to go... I don't want to accidentally dig into these. Um, right now, I do have a 9x9 nine nine area under there, so it is one block further than what you can see here. Um, but I'll probably do a couple more blocks just to get more room for the spawners. So let me go collect some more of those and then install those and we'll see how this thing operates. Interesting. So it's down here and I cleared out apparently enough space that I had room to spawn. You can't actually get past that ritual stone. Um, in that case I might have to fill in the ceiling a little bit here. And we'll see if that helps. Um, Come on, just turn off that one light and see how it works. Actually, he'll get sucked into that so that he won't be able to attack me anyway. So let's go ahead, turn you off. My frame rate is already terrible. Of course, he goes the other direction. Hurry up and die so I can put stuff there. Go ahead. Three, two, one, dead. Cool. Let's see if this helps. I should. As soon as I fill in all the area. Okay, so he did get killed by the arm here. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so they can get killed by both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in the roof here. It's a little hard to see. And yeah, so I'll fill in that. Um, I did have a, a uh, spider spawner here, but I accidentally broke it with the area effect dig, which is kind of annoying, but I'll go find another one and uh, get a couple more spawners in here and see how this works. Alrighty, so I have three different types of spawners down here. It uh, seems to be working. I did notice that... I think when I'm actually up in my storage area, I'm not close enough to actually trigger the spawners. But I'll be working down here quite a bit anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. 
if it does become an issue, I can always set up, um, Batania has a block, I can't remember what it's called, like Life Imbue or something like that, that will let you power a spawner using mana. So that's probably what I'm going to move towards in the future. Um, but for now, this does work. Um, it's a little slow, still. Um, actually, oh yeah, it's just it doesn't show when they appear. So I'm still manually harvesting it for now. Um, just kind of getting will built up. I want to get all of these. Um, I do have um, all my crucibles in place here now. Um, I might fill up my tartaric gem using this system. Um, just do that so that I can get other things. Because right now if I'm only throwing the crystals in, I think I can only get the type of crystal that I'm throwing in. Even if it's just raw, it'll only give me raw. I think. I could be wrong. I'm not sure. But I think it does need to have at least 100 in order to make that. So I would need to throw that in there anyway. Um, so I'm going to come back to you in a bit. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do next here. And what I should do with the setup. I've been sorry just kind of babysitting this for a bit. Um, just waiting for crystals to grow over there. And then just throwing them down kind of where they belong. Um, so far I haven't gotten any of the other crystals. So I'm hoping I should get some soon. I decided to stop harvesting the uh, uh, destructive crystals here. Uh, maybe just doing the raw will hopefully work for that. What I'm basically doing is harvesting them, throwing the crystals into here, filling up the gem, because if the uh, if you put a gem into the Hellfire Forge here, it'll actually start charging based off of the will and the aura. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's probably a demon sheep or something outside. It's kind of a creepy sound. Um, anyway. Yeah, just harvesting, uh, throwing the crystals in here, charging up my crystal, the uh, Tartaric Gem. That way, it should hopefully work for getting all the other types. Um, it's kind of a net positive, but it's slow net positive. Oh, here's another one. I hope the thing dies quickly. That's really annoying. There you go. The thing died. <laughs> yep, like I said, I'll keep babysitting this. Hopefully, I should get some other crystals soon. Um, if not, then I don't know what I'll do. So I've basically been babysitting that thing for a while now, and uh, coming out here at night to kill things. But I wanted to bring you back, because I'm at 99.97. There we go, 100. Nothing fancy happens, nothing, it's just, yay, you're at 100. Now nothing else will gain affinities, which is actually really awesome, because now I can fly without worrying about getting affinities that I don't want. So, yeah. Pretty awesome. Been waiting for that for quite a while now. Um, now I'll actually be able to kind of spread out and get other types of spells that I hadn't before because I was wanting to avoid getting those affinities. So for now I'm going to keep doing this, keep killing things, um, just until I can get uh, basically all the different crystals down there. Uh, right now I did find the green crystal, so I'm still waiting on the blue and the uh, purple. I don't remember the names, but whatever. Um, once I get at least one of each of those, then I will set it up to be automated. Uh, right now it's kind of, uh, it can't really be automated yet because once I do that, then it's going to start just not working. It's not going to, I won't be able to get the different types of crystals that I'm wanting. So once I can get at least one, then I'll be able to set it up to just collect things for me. We're over here on our transportation wing. As you can see, it hasn't gotten, well, really any love since I built it. Um, so far I still just have the single uh, another portal here. Um, we're about to change that. So one of the things I was waiting for with the uh, affinity gain was being able to fly more reliably without messing up my affinities. Since now I'm at 100 it won't change anything and I can fly as much as I need. So since I can fly now without worrying about anything, these are all the inner pearls I have. We're gonna go to the end. So along with this, with going to the end, is I'm going to set up a gateway here um, and a gateway over at wherever the end portal is. Uh, I don't know how far away it is, I haven't found it yet. Um, but, we're going to set up our portal here. Then I can, whenever I want, just activate the gateway and teleport over to the end. Um, so, I think I'm going to put it somewhere in here. I don't have the materials to build it yet. But, to start that, I need a keystone receptacle. This is kind of the uh, main point of the gateway. You enter in your combination for where you'd like to go into this and then it'll just set up a portal. So we need a couple Eyes of Ender and Life Essence. Now I could fight the Life Guardian. I, I don't want to fight the Life Guardian right now. He's 
He's annoying. I don't have a spell that'll work for him yet. Um, so let's get some golden apples. I already grabbed a couple eggs and make a couple of these things. We need at least two of these. Um, I'm going to make, I think, four of them just to have them. Um, I can at least then set up a spot in my storage area here, as well as I need at least two anyway um, in order to actually, you know, a portal's only good if I have two of them. So we can gather materials for that and make ourselves a gateway. Looks like I don't have enough gold for the golden apples for that, at least not to make uh, eight golden apples to make four life essences. Um, so let's get some gold out of here. Um, once I noticed this started to get gold, I actually turned it off. Um, that way, once it eventually does hit diamond, I want to be able to hit that with fortune. So for now, I'm just going to let it sit there until I'll turn on the fortune. But uh, for now, that's a good amount of gold. Let's grab a couple charcoal um, blocks. And we'll run downstairs and set up this for the uh, ore doubling. Um, I'm still going through with ore cascade down here. Uh, I might actually have, I think I threw a stack in here recently. I guess not. Um, I put a box around it so that way my magnet doesn't pick it up. Um, a funny thing with the uh, magic walls here is that they actually will reflect spells now. There's something in the description, but... So yeah, I tried to dig something and I ended up digging blocks behind me one time. <laughs> Let's go ahead and break that. And... Toss the gold in. Close it up. And toss the charcoal on. So that'll be going for quite a while. Um, it'll just kind of slowly turn this into the gold dust, and then I will smelt that down, and eventually be able to make what I need. So I'll be back once I have all the gold that I need for all the apples that I need to make all the life essences that I need, and so on and so forth. In order for that gateway to actually work, we're going to need power. So while I'm in a break it and fix it type of mood, we've got, like I said, it's going to have quite a few of these celestial prisms. I think I'll have them sharing these uh, towers here, mostly because diamonds are expensive. So I'll have one there, one over here, one over here, one over here, so that's four of those using diamonds. Then I've got a double stone here, this will be another set of pillars. These ones will have moonstone on top. So I only have two of those, those work at night only, whereas the uh, diamond topped ones only work during the day. So this way I'll have power coming in both day and night. So I've got that set up there. Um, what I'm going to do now is I need to have my neutral. So I broke down the area I had before. Uh, like I had said in, you know, episode two, uh, it was temporary. <laughs> so we're going to move over here just so I have all my power generation in one spot. Apparently I'm only getting terrible frame rate right now. I'm not quite sure why. Nothing else is running. In fact, I don't think I have any machinery running here as well. Or maybe this is where I was looking. Yeah, frame rate just doubled now. Okay, whatever. Um, we'll go ahead and place these down. Got all of the stone bricks, and now let's place our obelisk and grab our chalk. Now, at some point, I will have to set up probably a flicker or maybe a uh, item node or something underneath here to keep this loaded with Vintium at all times. For now, um, I'm just going to keep doing like I've been doing, which is just manually throwing it in when I need it. And uh, I'll put actually a crate here just so I can throw extra Vintium in it nearby. Um, so he's going to charge up. Uh, it actually fills, you know, really quickly. Um, let me go grab that other battery. I think I put it away already. And a couple uh, item conduits. Or not item conduits. Um, Ethereum conduits. That's what they are. Because uh, the uh, max range on the Ethereum from these is 10 blocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe all the power over to here. And be able to run at least one Calefactor for now. This is a temporary spot as well. I'll put up a, like a super smelter array of these or something. Um, for now, it'll at least have, I don't wrench them either, it'll have all three types of power. Now the cool thing with that is if I have all three types of power, it'll actually double almost anything I throw in there, including, you know, cobblestone going to smooth stone, um, I think even uh, sand to glass, uh, wood to charcoal, pretty much all of those will double, um, which means at least I'll be able to skip the uh, or a cascade step in my ore processing. If I'm lucky, there might be a glitch set up where uh, I'll actually end up getting four ingots per, depending on if I can smelt the uh, dust for two. But we'll see. Okay, I hadn't really gotten to record much, but I wanted to at least show you my progress here. So as you can see, I did find all the uh, different types of crystals here. 
Um, and then over the course of probably about three hours it took me to get this, um, been slowly growing them. Um, that guy's out of place because he goes underneath there. Um, so the way I have this set up is I have a advanced item collector on top of this chest. So anything within this range will be pulled into the chest. And then I have a couple uh, nodes here. I have the input routing node, which will pull uh, items from this chest into the system. And let's uh, pull my node router here so I can kind of see the lasers. So the input is actually going then into my main storage hub upstairs. Then I have uh, these ones over here are all uh, output routing nodes. These will output into the chest, into the hoppers here, which are then going into the various crucibles. So I just have it set so that each hopper will store up to one stack of the crystals. Um, and these will be pulled, like you can see, it goes, the laser goes up to the top there, goes into the output line from my storage hub. So basically what that means is it will take the crystals that are up there, and then it'll put it into these hoppers. Um, so I've let this system run for a little while now, and it's running into a slight problem. So it's pulling all the uh, crystals into the hoppers here like it should, but if you notice, this last hopper and also the top bar there is empty. Um, these raw crystals here are... they're not growing as fast as it seems. So what I'm thinking... well, I'll go through my thought process here. What I had thought was happening, and may still be true, is that... so let's say it takes 30 will to create a crystal, uh, to create the different shards there that are popping off. Um, I get 50 will per crystal that I throw in the hopper. So if I throw one crystal in, in theory, I should be able to get at least one, if not more, little shards popping off. But the problem is that doesn't take it all at once. So that 50 could put, you know, 10 on this one, 10 on this one, 10 here, 10 here, and 10 here, and then it didn't grow any crystals. Even though these each have 10 towards their crystal, they're not actually growing. In theory, it's still a positive feedback, but as you can see, it's clearly not since I ran out. Um, so that's one possible thing. So the way I tried to hopefully solve that a little bit was I took out quite a few of these. That way it's not trying to spread that uh, 50 points across, you know, however many I had here. I had four rows of, uh, let's see, one, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine of these. Um, yeah, so I had 36 crystals here growing and I clearly wasn't getting it to work. So I took out a bunch of the extras there. It's still not really working. I'm have a few of these left, so I'm just kind of tossing them in one at a time. Um, you can see that 50 points popped up there, and it's slowly being used up as it's being absorbed by each of the crystals. So my hope is that I'll get at least one to pop off. Hopefully. We'll wait here a little bit. Down to 30, 28, 24, halfway through, so maybe? Another possibility of what's happening, though, is that these other crystals, the various other types, um, they can actually grow using the raw will, but it'll take a lot more than it normally would. So like this guy, it'll take 30 will to create a crystal worth 50. Oh, good, we got one. So it's at least somewhat working. We'll see if that keeps growing or not. Um, but these guys will take more than just that. I think it'll actually take more than 50 will to create one of these if it's using raw will. If it's using its own, like steadfast or vengeful or whatever. Um, if it's using its own, it'll be fine. But if it's using raw, it'll use more. So I think what it's doing is it's actually taking the raw will from the aura and using it to grow these guys, even though I have plenty of the other crystals. In fact, I've had this going for a while. Like I said, I've got a full stack in each of these hoppers now, as well as probably a couple stacks up in my storage system. Whereas I don't have any of the raw will. I guess I have two on me. Um, so I hadn't seen this problem when it was running for a while. In fact, I had a full stack of the raw as well. What I had done, though, was I did place down the rest of these crystals just to get it to fill up the whole space. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to break two of each of these. I'm just going to break it with a pickaxe here. So let's break these. And hopefully that will make it use less raw will to make these specialty crystals versus making just the regular one. So we will see how that works out. Um, I think we're going to let this sit for a little bit. Need to go uh, kill some mobs here because 
my uh, Tartaric gems are actually empty as well. These were completely full at one point. I had the system complete positive feedback. All these were completely filled up. I had a full stack. Actually, I had several stacks upstairs. And it just burnt through it over the course of a couple hours. So I'm going to throw some in here. We'll see if it is working. And uh, I'll get back to you if it's working. If it's not working, then I'll troubleshoot it some more. And hopefully I should have a positive feedback. So I'll be right back. Okay. So I did a couple changes. One is I put a little half wall underground there. Um, it kind of is preventing some of the mobs from going into the Dark Aurum. Um, it'll slow down the uh, Ethereum production, but at this point, the uh, battery over here is completely filled anyway. Um, yeah, 250,000. Um, it's completely full, so I don't really need that to charge too much faster anyway. Um, I also ended up throwing a, another skeleton spawner down there. So I have two skeleton spawners, two zombie spawners, um, a spider spawner, and I also threw down a blaze spawner. So, with all that, it seems to be uh, getting more, I guess, power, more souls to the ritual here. Um, and with that, I am, looks like, getting a positive feedback on the uh, crystals here. Uh, I'm not sure how many are in there. I've got five on me. I had two when I started, and I threw one in to kickstart this. So, by throwing one in, I have five now, as well as however many are in here. So, it looks like that's working now. Um, we'll let it go for a little while. Uh, the uh, I'm hoping to get a nice backlog here of a full stack. Um, the crucible itself will hold a stack, so when I have a stack in here, stack in here, I'll have two stacks built up of kind of backlog, and then it'll start actually filling up my inventory upstairs. So with that, that should be mostly functioning. Um, I'm going to keep monitoring it, like I said. Um, basically, if it ever drops below 50, it should, there we go, jumps up to 99 there. It just kind of burns off that last one. Um, seems to be working. Um, it's not quite to the level where I'd want to use it for charging up my gems yet. Um, I'll get there. Uh, once I have a bit of a backlog of the crystals built up, then I'll be able to just charge all my gems instead of having to go kill things. Um, along with that, I actually can probably do this now. Uh, these guys aren't going to be using um, the raw uh, will anyway. I need to look up which one's using which. Um, but I can actually set that up pretty soon here. I'll just go build a, uh, a pile on here and expand the will over to these chunks. And then I can get this automated as well. Although I think I'm not going to be able to have time to set up the placing of materials in here yet. But I can at least you know, manually throw down a bunch of diamond ore and see it all get broken up. Just to uh, test it and see that it works. So let me go get the materials for the pile on and I'll be right back. Looks like those, that tweaking that I did uh, did pay off. Um, I do, I'm now getting a small collection of the crystals here. As you can see, I've got a stack on me as well as, well, about a stack and a quarter here. So this stack here is slowly increasing as it's going. Um, I did notice a couple uh, various things to look out for when, if you're going to use a similar design to this. Um, the first is that since everything's being based off of regular vanilla spawners, you have to be within range for that to work. Now, if you're not within range, then it doesn't have the, uh, it doesn't have anything spawning. Um, which means that this ritual is now doing nothing. Um, the reason why that's important is it's still going to be using the will to create the crystals. Um, only now it's going to be using the full amount of will. It's going to take a lot longer. Um, but I did notice that when I left for a while, came back, that, uh, um, yeah, I ran out of will. Um, so that's the thing to look, f look for in this. Um, I'm going to probably fix that in the future once I get some Batania set up. Um, I want to use the uh, life imbuer on each of those uh, spawners down there. Um, but in the meantime, this is working. Um, I, like I said, I've got a stack and a quarter on me. This one here is kind of staying about the same, I guess. Um, you can see I have a small little area where I was sitting over here to be AFK for a while. Let it sit for a couple hours, and it seems to be going pretty good. Um, my little chest here is collecting the drops from the mobs down below, as well as my crystals. Um, apparently I ran out of room for string, and I don't have green runes. Wait, why did I get runes? Not sure why these came in there. I guess probably when I was further away, some uh, mages spawned in there. Uh, slates, just I ran out of room in my inventory. Um, so, let's go upstairs, and uh, I can make a little bit of room up in the storage system for the string here. Um, I'm probably going to turn it all into wool. Um, we'll need that at some point, probably. Or at least I've got space for wool, so 
Let's go ahead and craft you and craft you. So now it's just another input chest here that's going to flow in. And let's put this green rune where it goes. You can see I've got the various colored items. I've got the uh, petals, the flowers, or the mystical flowers, the vanilla flowers if applicable. And then let's look for green. It's just in the order of uh, whatever it is in JEI. So runes I put here. And I think I had... No, I didn't have any wool. The wool already went in. So yeah, I've got two stacks of wool. <laughs> um, okay, so at this point, I've been keeping this stack of uh, Eyes of Ender on me for going on about three days now. Um, <laughs> I've been kind of just on and off playing, uh, trying to make sure that the system is set up and working. Um, so I have Eyes of Ender. A couple things I'm going to do with this. First off is let's get some obsidian. Uh, one of the kind of drawbacks of this pack is I don't really have any sort of backpack. So I'm going to go with the vanilla method of a backpack, which is simply an ender chest. It's nothing fancy. It's uh, I can place it down. It's apparently invisible. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, I did make some tweaks to my configs to improve my frame rate. Um, but you have to break a silk touch. Luckily, I have a silk touch spell. So basically, I've got a backpack now. Um, like I said, nothing too fancy. I'm going to make a uh, rift spell as well, which I think is about a double a double chest worth of storage. Um, not sure if there's any other real storage thing I can use. Um, I'll have to look around and see what all my options are. Um, anyway, with the rest of these ender pearls, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the end, or at least stronghold. Um, but before I do that, let's uh, clear out JEI here. I need a, if I can remember what it's called, keystone receptacle. Uh, I mentioned this in a clip a little while ago. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make this. I need the life essence, which is eggs and golden apples. I did finally get enough gold now that I have a, a quarry set up. So I need, actually wait, I don't need blocks of gold. That's not notch apples I'm making. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's get 16 of these. And two apples. And actually, as I'm getting these, I'm realizing that I probably actually already have these made, and they're down in my uh, um, essence refiner. Yeah, that or I actually threw them up here already. Oh, no life essence. Okay. So let's go ahead and grab two eggs and an arcane ash. Oh, let's run downstairs. Again, missing my elevator. And let's see. Oh, wrong one. This one. Ah, I do already have some life essence. Okay. Um, couldn't hurt to make more. I plan on having kind of a network of the portals anyway. So we'll toss these in and let it go. So we have our life essence. Let's go ahead and get the materials for the gateway and set up our gateway. So I will gather all materials, um, clear out my inventory, it's kind of a mess at this point, and uh, get back to you, ready to make a gateway. And let's go ahead and craft up the keystone receptacle. So just pop everything in here. Real simple, real cheap, once I get the essences of course and the ender pearls. Now let's actually build this. So we're over here in the transportation wing. I think I'm going to swap out these uh, nether brick stairs for um, either one of the uh, um, demon will infused stones, or I'll think of something. But I don't know. I do like the contrast of the red, though. We'll have to see. Um, okay, so this thing is, if we look up in our arcane compendium here, let's go to structures, the gateway. A uh, bit of kind of flavor text talking about uh, what it's useful for. It's, it's a gateway. It's kind of like a Stargate type thing. Um, there's a couple different variants of it. You can either make it with stone bricks or stone brick stairs in the corners here. Um, so it's just a five by one structure um, with the keystone receptacle on top. So I think right here is probably, I guess, as good a spot as any. Now this one I had a space behind it. I might do that over here as well. That'll also kind of give me an option if I want to have like a different color of a block behind it. Um, yeah, we'll see. So let's start by throwing the chisel stone bricks there. 
let's chop out this area. Um, let's actually get the blocks that I'll be needing for this. Stone bricks there and there. And now we need the actual gateway, which is kind of a rounded area there. Let's build up this one here. Yeah, so it's kind of a little circular area inside here. Let's place you. And at this point, we can place then these as stairs. I'm going to go with stairs on the corners just to make it kind of more rounded looking. And then regular bricks, regular bricks, and the keystone receptacle in the middle. Um, I think it needs to be facing forward though. So let's just... Yeah, there we go. So let's break out these. Um, and right now, it's not going to do anything. Um, what I also need is some runes, and specifically also a keystone to store those runes in. Um, if I shift right click with this, see there's space in the top here. Um, actually, I don't even know if I... I won't need the keystone actually to uh, set my combination. Um, so let's go ahead and grab some runes. Uh, you can use any three runes, doesn't really matter the color. Um, these are Ars Magica runes, I guess. In a magic mod pack, there's a million different types of runes. Um, you can use any type. I don't have a whole lot of different types here yet. Um, but I'm going to go with white, white, and white. Now, the reason for that is white is just bone meal, um, which is, you know, easy to come by. Uh, so let's get that. And cobblestone. Basically, the two ingredients for the, for the runes here is going to be just cobblestone and bone meal. And the reason that's important is because there's actually a, a recall spell. Let's make three sets of these. There's a recall spell, and if you cast it in a ritual, what you're able to actually do is uh, recall yourself to a, um, a gateway. So if I have this set to white, white, and white, what I can do is, in case I'm ever lost, once I get a, re a recall spell set up, what I can simply do is kill a couple zombies, make three sets of runes here, make the uh, mark on the ground, which I'm going to be using. I have my ender chest here, which again, oh, it is showing up now. I'll have my wizard chalk in that. What I'll be able to do is just make these runes, toss them in the ritual, cast it on myself, and voila, I'll be just back at home. Um, I think actually looking at this, this doesn't look right. I think I did this a little wrong. Yeah, so this would be stone brick. These here would be stairs. So let's go ahead and break that out. There we go. And place you. Place you. There we go. There and there. Okay. That looks more like it. So let's shift right click on here. Place three white runes. And now what I'll be able to do is I'll set up another gateway at the end portal and be able to use this for teleportation. But there's still one more thing. If you notice when I mouse over this, there's power needed for this. Um, it actually uses quite a lot of power. Uh, that's why I wanted to set up my power system before. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down some uh, ethereal conduits, uh, which will let me uh, basically leave my power from where it's being generated over on this side uh, over to my gateway. So let me grab those, which I think I put in here. Yeah. For some reason, they're not showing up the uh, little icon for it, or yeah, the little image in the inventory. It's not showing up. Uh, when they're placed in world, they do show up. I've got one here already. Um, I think these have a range of 10 blocks. Um, so let's actually place it right here. Again, not showing up. That's okay. And then I'm just going to place every 10 blocks. I'll place one of these. Um, anytime I need to branch left and right, what I can do is I'll just place more of them. But for now, since I don't have any actual power requirements anywhere else, um, I think just placing them along the ceiling works out quite well. So I'm going to go ahead and place those. Oop, now he shows up. I'm going to place these and uh, get back to you once I have power flowing. Alrighty, and the last one, let's go ahead and place. It's just right in front of the uh, gateway there. Let's fly back home here. Oop, almost missed it. There we go, right before my flight spell wears off. So right now it shouldn't be doing anything. Let's go ahead and grab our wrench. And it's gonna be kind of annoying to do this because what I'll have to do is basically path each of the different 
um, colors how <laughs> to path each of them individually. So let's take you. Go ahead and run over here. And this should be within range now. Right click, pairing successful. There we go, the neutral is slowly filling up. It's kind of hard to read on the dark background there, but that's filling up pretty easily. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna go grab the uh, other two colors and then let's go ahead and look for the end. We find ourselves in the middle of an ocean. Um, decent way from base, not, not too bad actually, pretty much straight line diagonal from where I was. Um, I actually explored kind of around here earlier anyway, found this underwater dungeon. Um, I'll go there later and show you guys that. Um, but we have arrived. Uh, I haven't actually dug down to the end portal yet. Um, I realized I'd probably be actually recording for that. <laughs> um, but even worse is I actually realized how long this episode is actually gone. And we're going to have to cut it here. And hope then uh, next episode we'll pick up right where we left off. Uh, go down into this little hole, dig a little ways, hopefully find an end portal. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next episode um, where we'll go to the end. I uh, have some materials on me. I grabbed, I only have a couple glass bottles, but should be enough to get a little bit of corporeal stuff started here. I also made a decent bow. I uh, just combined bows that I already had from killing mobs. Uh, some arrows, because I don't have infinity. And uh, that should hopefully help us to take down the Ender Dragon. Um, but, like I said, that's going to be for the next episode. Um, in the meantime, uh, I will uh, look forward to any feedback that you guys have, positive or negative. And thank you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.